Late last year, Capcom announced that they would be making big strides in the competitive gaming scene. They've already done a great job of integrating the Capcom Pro Tour into the grassroots structure of the fighting game community, and in response to leagues like the Overwatch League and the League Championship Series, they promised to bring over team-based esports leagues for Street Fighter to North America. Which brings us to today and the foundation of the North American Street Fighter Pro League. It's scheduled to start in April of this year, so awesome. More Pro Street Fighter is great for everyone, and the team format is, in my opinion, an underappreciated and underused competitive format. Looking at Capcom's announcement for the Street Fighter Pro League, though, there's not much actual detail. We know that 18 of the top Street Fighter players will be split into six teams of three. The winners of six online qualifiers and six fan votes will be drafted by six captains determined by points on Capcom's Pro Tour leaderboard. It sounds great, but there's one poison pill in these rules that leaves most of the FGC scratching their heads. Reading a little further into the announcement, Capcom says that a character ban system will be in effect for this league. Before each match, each team will be able to ban one character from use for the entirety of the match. Capcom says in their release that they wanted to inject some drama and strategy into what would otherwise be a standard event. But some fans and figures in the fighting game community are pushing back on what they see as a regressive rule for a competitive fighting game event. Detractors of a character ban say that it could potentially kill the chances of character specialists looking to make a name for themselves if they never actually get a chance to showcase what makes them unique. There's also the argument to be made that the strategy for a Street Fighter ban phase is paper thin. Whereas in a team game like League or Dota where you pick and ban based off of your team composition, you don't interact with your team in a fighting game. So most of the strategy that comes from banning a character in a 1v1 game boils down to what character does the best player on the other team main? Let's ban that character. A lot of the pushback that I'm seeing comes from a place of concern. Concern that character bans go against the spirit of Street Fighter, leading to less exciting matches where some of the best Street Fighter players in the world are forced to fight each other with less than practiced secondary or tertiary characters. And this is all before mentioning that banning characters in a competitive fighting game is usually only reserved for the most extreme cases. If you want a recent example of some of the nasty debates that surround character bans, just watch the hundreds of videos for and against a Bayonetta ban in Smash 4. Well, on the other hand, Street Fighter V has been out for nearly three years. The best players in the country probably have at least two or three characters that they're comfortable playing in a given setting. And if you're looking for character variety, this format should give you what you want because every member on a team will be required to choose a different character which should give lesser-used characters a spotlight, sort of how the Cooperation Cup for Third Strike in Japan does. If you want my opinion, I actually think that if done well, character bans can improve on an event. Back in 2014, then-tournament organizer Adam Hart ran a special rules tournament for Marvel vs. Capcom 3 called UMVC3X at Ultimate Fighting Game Tournament 10. For the unfamiliar, every competitor privately banned one character from use before the tournament started. Each pool had a different list made up of the bands that each participant from that pool chose. Duplicate bands were thrown out, so you actually ended up with a bit of a prisoner's dilemma. Do you ban Virgil yourself so you guarantee that nobody plays with him in your pool? Or do you ban another character that you just can't seem to beat? It was, it was a lot of fun to watch these competitors think on the fly and adjust their team composition as needed and allowed some lesser used characters to really shine through. But this special rules tournament was a one-off, non-serious event, and that's the question that I believe that the North American Street Fighter Pro League needs to address. Just how serious is the competition you're looking to make? If this is supposed to be a fun event that shows a lighter side to Street Fighter, I don't think a character ban goes far enough. Make the people play in blindfolds or on DDR dance mats. If this is meant to be for fun, make it fun! But if this is a format for an event that's worth a big money and is meant to be taken seriously, I don't see how banning characters for a 1v1 game makes it more engaging for anybody. And I'm not saying you shouldn't run an event like this. Who knows, this format could end up being an extremely fun way to experience competitive Street Fighter. I guess the only way we'll find out is by tuning in. Hey everyone, thank you once again for watching. I know I keep saying it and saying it and saying it, but your views really do mean a lot to me. I just cracked 10,000 subscribers, which is nuts. I never thought I would get that far. 
Uh, and I just really have you to thank for liking, sharing, and commenting, so I really, truly do appreciate it. Um, as far as uh, any other channel updates go, I do have my next history video coming out uh, sometime within this month, and uh, I'm really excited about it. Um, it's going to be the start of a new series that I'm going to call Be My Guest, a look at uh, the history of some of my favorite uh, cameos, guest characters, um, special guests in fighting games. So I'm looking to have that done within the next few weeks, so make sure you look for it then, and uh, yeah, I will see you soon. Uh, see you around. Um, yeah.